Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, and this video is the basis for all the videos that will follow here at Build Nation. I would like to introduce you to the tool in which we will build amazing applications for any type of need, whether it is your need or your customer's needs. To access, type flutterflow.io in your browser. Press enter, and here it is. This is their website, the Flutterflow website. If you already have an account, you will click here on sign in. In this case, as I will create everything from scratch with you, I will click on start for free. And here it's very simple. You can enter your credentials here in these fields, or you can create with Google, Apple, or with Microsoft. In my case here, I'm going to create my Google account. Once again, it's very simple. You'll simply connect your Google account and that's it. I'll connect my Google account here and I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, we're in. I'm going to close this pop-up, and this is where all our projects will be, all our applications. Personally, I like to work on the light theme, so I'll change here at the top, clicking on this little sun. Perfect. What we're going to do now is create our application, the project of our application. I'll click on this button here, Create New. Flutterflow offers a range of project templates for you to use, applications of all kinds. But what we are going to do here is to create our project from scratch and develop something unique. Let's give here a name for our application. In this case, for the channel videos, it will be a to-do list application. And we will click on this button, create blank. Wonderful. Click next and click start building. Okay, so this is where we are going to work on our application. This is the main interface of Flutterflow. For this class, I have prepared an introductory content. That is, it will be just the basic fundamentals of the Flutterflow interface. The basic concepts, right? This is the preview where you will see everything you are doing in your application. That is, here it shows exactly your application. Good. And by clicking here, you can change the sizes of the preview. Just click with the right mouse button and it will bring it to you. A list with several presets of mobile phones. And the same applies to tablets. Right click here, you will have several tablet sizes. And by clicking here, you can change the orientation of the preview. And here are the laptops. You can view how your application will look also on laptops. That's cool, isn't it? Here in the corner, you can switch the theme of your application between light and dark. Here on the side, we have other buttons, like this one called Display Device, which basically serves for you to show the frame of the cell phone or the tablet. There is also this button which allows you to resize the preview to the size you want. Okay, here on the left side of the interface, we will have the elements, so here there are several types of elements that you can use and insert in the pages in your application. I will click here on one of the elements of the page. In this case, here we have a column. I will select it. Here on the right side, I can change the properties of this column, including its name, which is not necessary for layout elements. By clicking on these buttons, I can specify on which devices this element will be visible. Then we will talk specifically about responsibility. Here in this slider, you can change the opacity of this element. So to simplify even more, here you can work with the visibility of this element and with the alignment. And with other properties like main axis alignment and cross axis alignment. Let's take a look at this side menu here on the left side, which is where you can find some resources which can be useful in your journey with your application. This is in Widget Tree, where you will see the entire structure of elements present on a page of your application.
you will be able to see all the pages of your app exactly here. Here you have the storyboard of your app. You will see a web of all the pages and see exactly how they connect with each other, which is very interesting. In this next session, Call Connect, we will have the entire back end of the application. That is, everything that happens behind the screen, you will configure here. So here you will have Firebase. We will not talk about Firebase in this class. We will talk in a next class. Here you also have variables, so you can work with variables. App State, we will also talk about App State in a future class and many other cool things here. I'm going to delete these elements here and start a page from scratch. Okay, so now we have nothing on our page. To add a new element, just click on this button and choose the element you want to add. Usually the page of an application or a website or anything of that nature. Usually they start with a column, aligning the items below each other, one session below the other. When it is not in a column, it is in a row or in a container. These are basic and structural elements of layouts. Okay? In the case of our task list application, our page will be in column. Now inside the column, just for illustration, I'm going to add a container just to show how these elements behave. And I'm going to come here in the properties panel and I'm going to change the color of this container. I'm going to wear a red color. This will do. And here in the widget tree, I'll look for my column and I'll add another container in this column. Theoretically, this container should be below my red container. Now I'm going to change the color of this container as well. Click on use color. Okay, question. Why aren't these containers allied next to each other? You should know this. It is simply because these containers are inside a column and everything that is inside a column aligns vertically. If we want to align them side by side, we need to exchange this column for a row. And to do this, it is simple in Flutterflow. Right click on the column and select replace widget and choose row. And that's it. The elements are side by side. Okay, we're back from our column layout and that I wanna show you something cool. You can align your items vertically and horizontally. For example, here in main axis alignment, you can specify whether you want your items to align at the top, in the middle, or at the bottom, and has other types of alignment. Distributed alignment, another type of alignment here, and you can align your items at the ends by clicking here. To show how cross axis alignment works, I'm going to change the width of one of my containers so you can see exactly how this will work. I'm going to change it to 300 pixels. The first thing you notice is that the resize column according to the widest element inside it. Everything that is inside the column, we call them children. So the widest children of this column has 300 pixels. This means that the column will also have 300 pixels. Okay, so here's how the cross axis alignment works. You can align the items to the left, you can center them, and you can align them to the right, or you can stretch them. This means that all the children of that column will be stretched to the screen size. In item spacing, you can specify the distance between the children of this column, which may end up being very useful depending on the use cases. So guys, for this class, that's exactly what I wanted to pass on to you, the basics of the basics. From now on, we can get into more specific subjects. I would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. There will be very cool content and many tips on low-code development here at Build Nation. So leave the like and subscribe.
until the next video.